The solution is a better antenna. In this video, I'll describe two antennas. Both can easily be built, both are about the same size, and both will give vastly better performance compared with your handheld's rubber duck. The first was described in 1985, September issue of Amateur Radio Magazine. I'll include a link in the description section below. It's an NFED half wavelength of wire with a matching section comprising a inductor made of coax in the original and a capacitor also made of coax. This is the matching section. I've made it on a piece of printed circuit board material. It's single sided and I just used a hacksaw to make four pads. They're just cut into the copper. The inductor is about 0.28 of a microhenry. It's about six turns of wire and 10 millimeters in diameter. You can vary the inductance a bit by compressing and opening the turns. I should mention that VK6FC's original uses a length of coax cable about 29 centimetres long for the inductance. I substituted the air round type instead. For the capacitor, I used the same as the original, a length of RG58 coax. That is about one picofarad per centimetre. In this case, the capacitance needed was about 3.6 picofarad. If you're going to be using this outside when it's damp, then it would be a good idea to make some sort of casing for it. Here's the antenna on the Nano DNA. As you can see, there's a pronounced dip in the 2 meter band. on VK2ZOI's website. The flower pot design is quite a bit simpler. It's just a quarter wavelength of coax inner. Just removed it by going around the cable with a knife. Another quarter wavelength of coax, which I haven't touched. That's all exactly as described on VK2ZOI's website. I started with longer dimensions and the resonant frequency started down at around 130, 135 megahertz. Gradually cut the dimensions, cutting off here in the middle and also cutting off in the top and was able to get it to resonate in the two motor band with the dimension specified. So that's what I suggest you do. Make it slightly longer, but be prepared to cut down to the dimension specified. And then there's a feed line that goes to a BNC connector or whatever into your transceiver. Overall, it's simpler to build with no inductor or capacitor section. If you just wanted to build one, this is the one I would recommend. And you should also look at VK2ZOI's website where he talks about putting it into plastic conduit. You could make this into a home station antenna if you didn't need to be able to roll it up. 
and there's also modifications that allow operation on 70 centimeters so you could make it a dual band antenna though I haven't yet tried that it's helpful to put on the center of the coax at the end of the radiating element one of these terminal connectors not for any electrical connection but so you can connect some string or fishing line to support it if you're using this as a portable antenna just beware of the length of the terminal increases the length of the conductor so make sure you cut it back so you've got the same length as before Yes, well, what I'm receiving is excellent. Uh, yeah, five meters. Uh, I've gone back to five watts. Five watts. All right, I'll leave you to fiddle with it. But uh, very nice to say hello to you. It really is. VK three YE, VK three JS. In Australia, hi hi. But there we are. VK three Y, VK three H double G. Name is Wade Jeff. So he is mobile, uh, it's probably not going to be the best uh, reception for you, uh, Peter, over. You got your Peter, loud and clear, not a problem. Uh, anyway, I'm just coming into Caramdans now and I've got my trailer on the back, I've just got to pick up some timber, I'm just on my way home from work. So uh, I'll leave you to uh, get back to uh, Ian there, Peter. Just to summarise, both antennas will give a substantial improvement over what comes standard with your handheld transceiver. But my pick is the flower pot. It's easier to build, no fussy messing with coils or capacitors, and there's the potential to operate on 70 centimeters.